Khan and Chief Khan. But uh, the chief mentioned that from application to the eligibility, he loses about 90% of applicants. I think that was the data that he cited. And I've heard that before, that many people aren't eligible to even make it to academy. I want to talk about that piece of the puzzle, people who are applying but don't make it to even be potentially in the ranks of our police forces. I want to understand what those factors are that drive 90% of people to not be eligible. Are those things having a disparate impact on women and people of color? Are, should we be looking at that piece of the puzzle to make those eligible more diverse? Are all of those things critical to a safe and effective and trustworthy police force? Are they things we should hold on to? Um, as Ms. Faison mentioned, are there other factors we should be looking at that should make folks ineligible to make it to that final phase? For example, um, experience or ties to white supremacy groups. So I put it back to you, but I'd like you to speak further about that piece of the puzzle. Thank you. Um. I could speak, uh, uh, thank you, Assembly Member. Um, I could speak from the perspective of my experience with the LA Police Department. The biggest factor, I think, in why candidates will, will maybe drop off during the process is, is in large part time. The time required to conduct a background investigation and go through all the different steps and processes can be very lengthy. It could be a matter of, you know, uh, two, three months to six months to a year, depending on what needs to be done. And many people just can't wait that long for a job. Um, in terms of the factors, there are a variety of factors why people may screen out and departments have gotten better at making sure they meet the minimum requirements before even applying. Um, but it's a very rigorous process in terms of testing, you know, looking at their physical capabilities, um, a, a written and oral test, uh, psychological screening, which takes a great deal of time. Um, those types of things looking at sort of those minimum occupational qualifications. I think one area that is worthy of, of exploration in terms of the process is departments that continue to use the polygraph examination. Um, the polygraph has its utility, but I've always questioned it both as when I was a prosecutor and in the process now about its validity scientifically mm -hmm. to be able to truly find deception. Um, it could be used, and certainly people will confess to things uh, before they um, do the polygraph, but the chances of false positives and false negatives are, are still very high. And it's not that it's not a, a, it's not a useful tool, but I really wonder the amount of time, effort, and money, would it be better spent on more thorough background investigations, looking at um, talking to more associates, looking especially if a candidate lives elsewhere, um, and the value of that to find those associations that you, you alluded to of, of bias and other things. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of reasons why people don't make it through. Um, but the, the biggest factor is the groups that we are low on, which are, uh, um, to be more specific, is African-American, Hispanic, women, it starts from the very beginning. We have very few of those groups apply. Um, and so part of it is how do we change the perception and those sort of things amongst the groups that start out behind because they don't apply. Um, but there's all sorts of reasons why they get kicked out. The background is a very extensive. They'll go out of state. If you're from out of state, they talk to your neighbors, they go to your schools, they look at your personnel file if you're from another department or even applied at another department. So if you've applied for three other departments, our background investigators go look at your background packet at those departments. And if you told them something you don't tell us, that's a major problem. You're probably not going to get hired. So the, um, I, I'll address the uh, polygraph a little bit. It's, it's an invaluable tool. Some people use a voice stress test. Uh, we use a polygraph. We find out a lot of things through the polygraph that we didn't, you didn't tell us before the polygraph. So it is a critical part of the process. Um, and you get other chances to take the polygraph if you don't pass a question to see if, well, maybe you just left something out, we'll, we'll retake it. And then some people pass at that point. Um, but the other thing, and, and uh, Manny Alvarez is on here, so uh, he and I have talked about this and, and Post is working on this. But the other thing that um, is critical in the hiring process is obviously, if you don't make it through the academy, you got hired, but like you're still not an officer on the street because you didn't make it through the academy. So to me, that's sort of part of the hiring process. 
And what we found in years past that um, like the two academies prior to me um, being sworn in as chief here in Sacramento, we lost, I, I think it was somewhere between 16 or 18 people were kicked out of a total of two academies. Every one of them was diverse. So that every single person we kicked out was either uh, racial, racially diverse or gender diverse. And every single one of them was kicked out for shooting the range or driving. Two things that I think are learned um, skills. So we don't want to lower the standards um, because you need to know how to drive and you need to know uh, the range. But um, to me, pretty much anybody can learn those skills, but we don't all start at the same spot. For example, when I was in the academy, I was 19 years old. I'd never touched a gun before. My roommate was 53 years old and just spent 30 years in the military. To think you can just have a class tomorrow, we're gonna to be at the same spot. I mean, I'm learning how to put the magazine in the gun and he can shoot it through a one inch hole or 30 rounds. And so it might take me a month to get that skill, whereas he starts out with that skill. But the rules always had us this exactly the same. Like I have to learn it in a certain amount of time. So one, we're working on a lot of those things with post. But the other thing we did is instead it, before the six month academy, we now have a pre academy where we put all our people through a month to a month and a half of a pre academy where it's heavy on range and driving. And we have kicked very few people out of the academy due to those things. But prior to that, we were the the little bit of diversity that we were getting at the time before we've revamped our recruiting and some of the other things with Sac State that we've done. Um, the little bit that we're, uh, we're, we're hiring, a lot of it we were kicking out in the academy for those two issues and that has been solved. So some of these things you just have to look at the process and see, is there some other way we can accomplish this? And that's what we did. Thank you. Can I ask one follow-up 